Hello everyone, in this video I'll demonstrate an algorithm for procedurally generating 3D dungeons. I'm using Unity 3D for this, but these concepts can be used in any game engine. The goal of this project is to generate dungeons that are unique and interesting to explore. A dungeon consists of rooms connected by hallways. Dungeons can have multiple floors and rooms on different floors will be connected by stairs. Take a look at this randomly generated level from Enter the Gungeon. While there is a simple path from the start room to the end room, there are also branches into other areas. These make the dungeon more interesting to explore since they contain extra items and encounters. There are a lot of different ways to approach this problem. I eventually decided to base my algorithm off of this Reddit post, which describes the algorithm for a game called Tiny Keep. The original algorithm only works in 2D, so I extended it to work in 3D. The code for this project is available in the GitHub repo, linked in the description. First, I'll explain the dungeon generation algorithm for two dimensions. It works more or less the same as the tiny keep algorithm. Step 1. Place rooms in the dungeon. It doesn't really matter how they're arranged, so for this example I just gave them a random size and location. Step 2. Create a Delaunay triangulation graph from each room. A Delaunay triangulation is a triangle mesh created from a collection of points. The triangulation tends to avoid long, narrow triangles. This creates a lot of connections between nearby points while having relatively short edges. In this diagram, each dot is a room and each edge is a potential hallway in the dungeon. Not every edge will be used since that would create a dungeon that is too cramped with too many paths to take. We need some way to reduce the number of edges chosen for the final dungeon. I used the Boyer-Watson algorithm to produce this triangulation. Here you can see it being built with green lines. Step 3. Create a minimum spanning tree from the triangulation graph. For this, I use Prim's algorithm. The MST guarantees that every room will be reachable. However, since it is a tree, it contains no cycles. There is only a single path from one room to any other room. The edges in the MST are marked in green. These will be used as hallways. The remaining edges from the triangulation are marked in gray. These hallways may potentially be used in the final dungeon. Step 4. Randomly choose from the potential hallways. While the MST contains every room, it only contains a small number of edges. Take the gray edges that are not in the MST and randomly choose some of them to be hallways. This will add some loops to the dungeon. Here I used a 12.5% chance for each edge to be chosen. Step 5. For every hallway, use the A star algorithm to find a path between the two rooms. This video won't explain how the A star algorithm works, but there are plenty of resources online if you want to know more. What you need to know is that A star will find the lowest cost path given a graph and a cost function. The cost function I used makes it cheaper to go through an existing hallway than to carve out a new one. This encourages the pathfinder to combine hallways that pass through the same area. Going through a room is possible, but expensive, so in most cases the pathfinder will prefer to go around rooms. The pathfinder produces short and believable hallways between rooms. Here you can see the hallways being added as blue boxes. Here's some example of this algorithm using real art assets. The assets and the code to place them are not in the GitHub repo. We now have our rooms and hallways. In a real game, you might mark one of the rooms as the start room and another as the boss room. Other rooms might contain monsters, treasure, or whatever. In summary, this dungeon is created with these steps. Step 1. Place rooms. Step 2. Create Delaunay triangulation. Step 3. Find MST. Step 4. Choose random edges. Step 5. Pathfind hallways. To extend the dungeon generator to 3D, we just need to use the 3D versions of each algorithm. Step 1. Generate rooms in 3D instead of 2D. Some of the rooms are now placed on different floors. This change was trivial. Step 2. Find the 3D Delaunay triangulation of the rooms. Since this is now in 3D, this is actually the Delaunay tetrahedralization. Searching for that on Google returned a lot of research papers, but no actual source code that I could find. In the end, I had to learn how the Boyer-Watson algorithm actually worked so that I could change it myself. I don't know what a circumcircle is, but replacing them with circumspheres makes everything work in 3D. It's a little hard to see, but instead of producing triangles with three vertices, the algorithm now produces tetrahedra with four vertices. At least one of those vertices will be on a different floor, otherwise the tetrahedron would be degenerate. 
Step 3. An MST can be created trivially from the tetrahedron edges. Step 4. Choosing hallways randomly is also trivial. Step 5. Pathfind hallways. This is where it gets complicated. From here, I'll assume that you're familiar with how A Star works internally. The version for the 2D dungeon is the standard, dead simple implementation of A Star. To make it 3D, I had to add the ability for the Pathfinder to move up and down to connect rooms on different floors. However, the standard algorithm would have no special behavior for moving vertically. It might create a staircase structure, but it might also go straight up. I needed a system that gave more control over this. This is where the problem lies. I wanted a specific shape for the staircases, but that adds a lot of constraints to how the Pathfinder can operate. I'm using a staircase that looks like this. The staircase itself takes four tiles. The blue boxes are normal hallway tiles. The Pathfinder can only connect to the staircase from those blue tiles. Using the blue boxes from earlier as hallways, let's use green boxes to represent the staircases. Hallways and staircases might be placed in a dungeon like this. If a hallway connected to any other part of the staircase, it would create staircases that are impossible to use like this. This happens when the Pathfinder creates a hallway that intersects with the top half of a staircase. This is because only the first tile of a staircase is considered used by the A-Star algorithm. The Pathfinder thinks the rest of the staircase is available to use as regular hallways. What I need is some way to mark every tile in the staircase as used. Then the Pathfinder would know to avoid these tiles. I can't add the staircases to the closed set of A-Star. A-Star effectively calculates multiple paths simultaneously. So one path might use a tile as a staircase, while another uses the same tile as a regular hallway. If I put the staircases in the closed set, it'll prevent other paths from moving through the same tile, even if that staircase ends up not being used. But I can't just ignore them because then the hallways would intersect with the staircases like earlier. The solution was for each tile to keep track of all previous tiles leading to it. Then, when a neighbor tile is being evaluated, it'll be rejected if it falls on the path of the current tile. When a tile is updated with data for a new, lower cost path, its set of previous tiles is also updated. This pathfinding algorithm isn't exactly A star at this point. There are too many special cases just to handle stairs. Having to check the entire previous path on each step is expensive. But this performance is acceptable since the algorithm only needs to be run once at the start of the level. So here is the new pathfinding algorithm adding hallways and staircases to our dungeon. The blue boxes are hallways and the green boxes are staircases. There is one new limitation of this pathfinding step. Since the pathfinder has so many constraints from staircases, it's possible that there won't be a path between two given rooms. That's what these leftover green lines are. They are hallways that did not successfully pathfind. Zooming in on some of the hallways, you'll see that they can be simple or complex. Finally, here's a 3D dungeon made using real assets. From this perspective, you can see some interesting emergent behavior from this algorithm. Here are two staircases side by side. Here are two staircases that lead to the same door. This hallway descends two floors, so there is a landing in between the stairs. Hallways that pass near each other are not always merged into a single hallway. Sometimes they combine to form a large area. In general, the hallways and staircases created can be very complex. That's all I have for this video. This algorithm is a good basis for a dungeon generator, but there's plenty of work to be done before making it into a full game. If you like this video and want to see more like it, don't get your hopes up.